Today we will be looking at Johnny Lightning's the 1950s DC comic book Batmobile, a 124 scale diecast model car kit. But before getting into all of it, I'm Trevor and welcome to the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage. Picture this, you've just discovered a model car you know nothing about. Or perhaps you've owned these model cars in the past and you're just here to reminisce. Either way, we feature classic plastic, domestic kits, imports, new releases, television and movie cars, and model kits made by companies lost to time. If that sounds like a channel that you totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. And now let's go down to the bench and check out this amazing Johnny Lightning 1950s Batmobile model kit. This is a pre-painted easy assembly model kit for ages 10 and up at skill level 2. The back of the box also shows us many amazing Batmobile model kits by Johnny Lightning and Polar Lights, like the 1940s Batmobile, the 164 scale 60s Batmobile, the 124 scale 60s Batmobile, the Batboat and the Bat Gyro, and from Polar Lights the 60s Bat Plane and the 60s Batmobile. Typically I begin our review by taking a look at the instructions. Now this helps everybody to understand how the model will go together as well as for those people that have got this model and lost their instructions. I'm here to provide that service. So right off the bat, no pun intended, are the painting suggestions. It says paint is not necessary but offered as an option. The basic chassis is black, the exhaust pipes are aluminum, interior floor steel with flat black floor mats, interior details, the shift lever is bright silver, pedals are steel, telephone receiver is gloss red, fire extinguisher is on, <laughs> and the oh, fire extinguisher is on 14R and 13L, gloss red with silver straps and handles, pencil is yellow, the ruler is light tan, the map white with blue lines, wood interior cabinetry may be detailed to resemble only wood colors from oak or, or oak to walnut. Interior upholstery color choices are open to the builder, not defined. No definitive colors are seen in the comic books. Our expert consultant recommends flat matte green, but you may choose black as molded or painted flat, medium blue, dark gray, even deep red or burgundy. Then it shows the instrument panel may be detailed to resemble this. And that's the needles and gauges. It says needles on gauges should be red. If you are a French speaker, perhaps up in Canada, then the instructions also include French on the back side. Next up, we have the wheels and tires, and you want to make sure you don't lose one of these because, you know, Batmobile, if it loses a wheel, the Joker will get away. Anyway, we have our inner wheel, our wheel retainer, the outer wheel, and the tire. Now, first off, we start on our interior, and we start at the back of the car with this really wonderful bat desk back here. Now, this is to do chemistry and other cool experiments on as you're trying to fight crime. So this would be like your crime, crime scene laboratory desk. So what do we have here? We've got the desk front with drawers, the desk top, a microscope, a flask, test tubes, test tube rack right here, more test tubes. There's the pencil. There's the ruler. And this would be the map down here. Then we have a beaker and a beaker heater. Carrying on with our interior, we have the exploded view. So we'll start at the back again. We've got our sub-assembly of our desktop, which we did in the previous step, being glued in place on the interior pan. Then we have the pedestal, which goes in this hole, the stool top, our shift lever, which will drop down here the cabinets that go on the back of the seats. We have the seat back, the right side seat, the right side interior panel, then our steering wheel, our steering column, our dashboard, the microphone and telephone arrangement, which would be up under here. Coming across, we've got our floor pedals gluing in place here, our left interior side panel, the left seat, the left seat back, and the left seat back cabinet. Next up, we have our chassis assembly step, and here are the four assembled wheels that we did in the earlier step. So we've got our chassis pan here, which is a one piece, much like the promotional model kits. It does have a separately molded exhaust system in here, which will go up into the holes underneath. Then we have the rear suspension and the front, which almost appears to be poseable. So we've got our left and right spindles, which will go up into the fender aprons here. 
We also have our tie rod, our front suspension, and then the wheels will be put onto the spindles and these little points here on the rear axle. The entire chassis is then assembled with all these different screws, so you will need a little screwdriver. So here we have all the components which are added onto the body, and I do believe this is actually done in the box, but they are just showing you what should be here. So there's the front bumper, the chrome headlight bezels, the headlights, the back cowl, and, all, and the vents here, and all this goes up to the front. And then we have this little pole lever, we also have the three-piece spotlight, which goes up on the top. And then we've got the rear bumper and the rear tail lights. Our final assembly step is to attach the great big bat fin to the back of the Batmobile. And it says to use the smallest screws available because the rest of the screws are actually all the same size. So the small ones are for the fin. And then you would put the assembled interior up into the body and attach it at its screw points there, and then add the chassis and screw that in underneath. And then over here on the side, it says, the Batmobile now stands ready to aid the dynamic duo as they cruise through the bleak back alleys where the criminals of Gotham City stay hidden. Riddle me this, Batman. In 1952, DC Comics had its first ever superhero team-up, starring Batman and another superhero. If you are the first person to name that superhero, your comment will be pinned to the very top of the comments section below. Good luck! You have exactly ten minutes to figure it out. <laughs> and now we're going to look at the body of our 1950s Batmobile. And one thing I'm going to let you know is this Batmobile ran all the way up to 1958, where it was replaced with a newer Batmobile, which was basically a design off the Chrysler 300. But this is the previous one, so this would be the early 50s. And actually, there's a lot of uh, real car references on this. So I'll just turn it up here. The nice thing is this is all mo uh, painted in black. This is die cast, so there's quite a bit of heft to the body, being all metal, of course. So if you take a look at this profile here, it's almost like the 62 Thunderbird back end, which kind of predates things. There's this wonderful bubble top on here, a great police siren of the era. And then the front end, to me, almost looks like 1951 Studebaker, kind of maybe with a bullet nose. So just imagine the bat cowl is gone and there's a bullet nose there. So this bat cowl is also used as a battering ram in the comics. So this is like a big piece of steel in here for busting into maybe the Joker or the Riddler's uh, secret, you know, hiding spot or something. Uh, the layer, the secret layer. So here we've got the wonderful headlights, and they're also uh, kind of molded in a light amber down below for the turn signals. Again, very, very early Studebaker kind of, uh, maybe even Oldsmobile kind of front lights on there. There's that little pull lever. And you can see just underneath the siren. So again, really great. It's got fender skirts on there. And then taking a look from the back. Now these, I I don't know if uh, Batmobile back in 1950 had that whole jet propulsion thing going on. Maybe. But these would look like little jet engines off the back. And then you got those nice red bullet tail lamps in here. And of course what makes this complete is the fin on the back. Now unfortunately... None of the panels open, so we can't see if there's an engine under here, a V8 or something, or a rocket engine, or whatever it is. Uh, not too familiar with the 50s Batman comics. But here, if we turn this over, you can see all the mounting point posts for the screws to go into. And uh, again, you will need that screwdriver in there. Also, maybe put a little bit of wax onto the screws. That's a trick my dad taught me. Use paraffin wax or wax from a candle and then put it on the end of the screws before you screw them in. And somehow that actually keeps the screws from plugging up and makes them easier to put in the holes. So there's our die cast Batmobile. Let's take a look at the plastic components. Here we have our chassis pan for our 1950s Batmobile. And taking a look at this, this is very much like a 50s Cadillac underneath here. It's got that pinched-in frame, 
and uh, you can see the V8 engine underneath here and the fuel cell, so it is not a rocket-powered uh, model after all, but still very, very interesting, really. So yeah, that X-frame, or whatever they called it, it's not quite a unibody, so this frame was sort of noted as a bit problematic in the 50s, and they did get rid of it in the 60s, because if you get a side impact, there's nothing stopping the other car going in until it hits a frame inside here, so that was always sort of a problem with these but the detail in them is very nice so there could be a basis that this is actually a Cadillac underneath here I mean it is Bruce Wayne he's got the money so why not and then if you turn it over it's very plain under here but there are some pins and these are for mounting that interior to get it accurate and in the right place so overall really good there are some mold marks on here uh, they'd be easy to sand off, but I don't know if you really need to do that or not, because I do believe the chassis pan will cover it all. But again, really excellent work from Johnny Lightning. On this parts tree, we see a lot of the interior details, as well as our wheel backs here, and our front spindles and the backing plates for our wheels, the retainer clips. So there's the map, there's the pedals, and then here we've got our steering wheel and our big bat gear shift lever. There is the bat stool, <laughs> guano, and then we've got our microscope here and our uh, our test tube rack, and there's the CB radio and the telephone, and then that's a beaker holder. So again, quite nice detail on here. I have seen these done up on the internet, and they do look wonderful. There are mold marks underneath, but again, nothing to really be concerned about. Maybe uh, just sandpaper this one down, because that's a beaker thing, and, you know, that would keep the uh, mold mark from holding this up. Again, the steering wheel is quite nice. It looks like, again, the Cadillac steering wheel. Actually, yeah, or even sort of how Ford had the uh, sunken in thing for safety. Actually, doesn't that look like 59 Cadillac, like Ghostbusters? Anyway, uh, there it all is, and again, wonderful work by Johnny Lightning. Our next parts tree shows the interior, and I can see why they said to paint the floor steel, because it is actually a textured steel plate underneath here. If I bring it up to the camera, you can see. And then take a look at how the seats go in. It's like the bottoms are molded in place. And then there's the front floor mats. So those would be painted flat black, as suggested. And I'd assume that this would be black as well underneath here. Now here's the back package shelf. This is where the actual chemistry lab is. So I assume that Batman would have to park the car, because I don't think Robin could really be doing all this chemistry stuff back there if the car's in motion. Basically because it would spill everywhere. Now underneath we see again those little pins uh, up under here, and those who go into the holes back here. And then we've got a few other holes for mounting, but overall there's little mold marks in here. So again, just a quick one with the sandpaper would alleviate all of those. But overall this looks really, really great. And then here we also have the rings for mounting our screws in so that we can attach this to our body. This parts tree shows our front suspension components, as well as the little desk drawers that go behind the seats, and then our exhaust system with the mufflers as well, and the tailpipes and all the rest. So again, the detail is rather simplistic, but with a lot of uh, wood graining technique, you could really make this stand out and look like authentic wood. The front suspension is a little bit simplified, simplified, trying to say. There's that missing tooth bugging me again. But it does have the pins and everything for that posable steering. And our exhaust system also fits in little holes and pins on the chassis. But overall, again, has that GM Cadillac type of arrangement to go along that X frame. So again, really excellent detail on here and will look good once it's all painted and put together. Next up, we have our bat interior. And this is where your painting skills will really come into effect. Nice door panels on here. There are fire extinguishers for that chemistry lab. They are molded into place. 
Then we've got our rear axle again, another Cadillac type of thing. The seat backs, and then our bucket seats, which again are really modern and cool looking. We also have our tie rod right here, and the drawers for that bat lab. <laughs> do, 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 bat lab. Okay, take a look at that dashboard. Again, really excellent work. And we've got our gauges in here. Now, I don't know if you can actually see the needles. Yeah, there we go. So that'll uh, really look really, really good. I guess the backings would be white and the numbers would be black in here. Little glove box down there, little teeny one. Again, lots of bat equipment. And then here, these look like speakers or maybe they're, uh, oops, little vents or something like that down there. Then we've got our drawers for our cabinet. Again, really looks cool. Looks like the drawers for on the backs of the seats. Look at the upholstery pattern on the seats. Again, really wonderful work. These almost look like a 66 Mustang, but of course this model is from the 50s, so it wouldn't be 66 Mustang. There's the seat backs, and they do have these little pins on here, little tubes, and that would be to hook up with the uh, drawers on the back. And then we've got our entire differential and rear axle molded as one piece. So again, really looks great. The separate door panels really are amazing. You've got armrests, but really brings out the detail when they do it separately like that instead of molding an interior bucket. So here I thought I would show you the remaining components instead of breaking it down further, because there's not much left. So what we have here is the only clear parts in the kit that are not already placed on the body. So this is the lab equipment. So we've got these six test tubes. So be very careful when you cut these out that you don't accidentally lose them. We also have this beaker here, and uh, I forget what that was. There's the base for the stool. And then we also have the tires and the chrome wheels and then the die cast bat fin and a bag of screws. Now I'm not going to open this up because I know I'm going to lose them, but I can see here that there's one of the small screws that's supposed to go in the fin. So I'll just move the screws out of the way and in fact all this and we'll just bring those up to the camera and have a look. So first off Here's our test tubes and the beaker. Oh, that must be the beaker then. Uh, as well as the flask. And then we've got the mount for the stool. Again, really nice work. Very simplistic on these parts because there's not much to them. They're all just tubes and shapes like that. Here's our chrome wheels. Now this is the only chrome, again, that's not on the body. But you can see the nice detail in here with a little bit of a black wash. It should look quite nice. And on the back they actually have three pins in a Y formation, which help you to mount these properly onto those wheel backs. Now our tires, I'll just bring up one. They are actually not labeled as to who they are, like Atlas or Armstrong or Goodyear or any of those, Firestone even. Uh, they do have a more modernistic tread on them, which is kind of a shame in a way, because it would be nice to see a 50s style tread on here, which would just basically be, you know, kind of like smooth lines or something like that, or a very minor tread. But overall, they are quite nice. They are big tires compared to some of the other, like, 125th scale model kits that I have. These look pretty huge. And then finally we have -na 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 -na, the bat fin. Now this is a nice big chunk of die cast metal. And it's basically a big fin. This goes up the center of the car. And you can see those little screw holes again. So use some of that paraffin wax. You could also add in a little bit of oil in here. Just a tiny drop. Because then that'll act like a cutting oil or even if you can get cutting oil, just put a little bit in there. You'll have to paper towel it out afterwards, but that'll help with the threads to make them cut into that steel, or die cast, I guess. So overall, again, the parts are really nice in this kit, and uh, very simplistic, but this will look great once it's all assembled.
Well, I hope you enjoyed that review of the 1950s Batmobile model kit in diecast by Johnny Lightning. And now stay tuned for next week's sneak peek. Stay tuned, Bat fans, to check out the amazing Johnny Lightning 1960s Batmobile. Next week, same Bat channel, same Bat time.